Hello Psych2Go fam, welcome back to another video. We hope you're staying safe and healthy during these crazy times. And we've always got your back with plenty of videos to keep you company. When does fear become a phobia? The American Psychological Association defines phobias as extreme or irrational fears towards a certain stimulus that is grossly out of proportion to the actual threat at hand. It's when if divide as an anxiety-related disorder. Phobias are among the most prevalent psychiatric illness in the world, along with depression and other anxiety disorders. Phobia is closely associated with social anxiety, fear of embarrassment, and low self-esteem. It can also be caused by upbringing. There are actually quite a number of phobias we don't even know existed. Wondering what those phobias are? Here are seven rare, but very real phobias you might not know about. One, allodoxophobia. Allodoxophobia is defined as the fear of other people's opinions. It's also linked with a fear of debate, discussions, and confrontations, as well as extreme anxiety and discomfort at discourse and controversy. People who suffer from this phobia do not want to know or hear about the opinions of others, which can be a problem at school, work, and everyday conversations. This phobia is so rare that psychologists are still arguing about whether or not it should even be considered a proper phobia at all, since so people are known to have it. 2. Dissidiophobia A specific phobia that often co-occurs with another anxiety disorder. Dissidiophobia is the fear of making decisions, and it's extremely rare. Those who suffer from dissidiophobia feel panicked and afraid whenever they're asked to choose something, because they don't trust themselves enough to make the right decision. As a result, they have a habit of relying on rituals or superstitions to decide, like flipping a coin, consulting their astrology, or asking for signs from the universe about what to do. Three, nomophobia, a modern day affliction. Nomophobia refers to the fear of being without one's phone. It's usually characterized by anxiety about not having your phone charged, misplacing it, forgetting it, breaking it, or not being able to check it throughout the day. While 66% of the global population shows signs of nomophobia, only a few are actually serious enough to be considered a clinical case in need of therapy. As you might, ex <gasps> As you might expect, it's especially common among adolescents to age 13 to 18 years old and was only brought to light in 2013. Before that, it was simply characterized as signs of smartphone dependency and social media addiction. Catoptrophobia. Are you creeped out by the sight of your own reflection? There's a phobia for that. It's called catoptrophobia or isoptrophobia, the fear of mirrors. Researchers believe this particular phobia may be rooted in religious beliefs or superstitions, as mirrors often serve as portals for ghosts, spirit, and apparitions to appear in many urban legends. It's also commonly associated with witchcraft and satanic rituals. Thus, those who suffer from catoptrophobia avoid mirrors and anything with reflective surfaces at all costs. Chorophobia. Chorophobia is the fear of dancing. Those who have this phobia avoid dancing and areas where dancing usually takes place, like ballrooms, clubs, stages, studios, theaters, and so on. or watching them dance on TV can also be a nightmare for them. Ablutophobia. Mysophobia, commonly known as germophobia, is one of the most common phobias in the world. So maybe it's not such a surprise that its exact opposite falls on the other end of the spectrum, ablutophobia. Ablutophobia refers to the fear of cleaning, washing, or bathing oneself. It normally begins in early childhood. While some of us dislike taking baths when we were still little, there are actually the rare few who never grew out of this fear. Because chorophobia is closely associated with social anxiety, fear of embarrassment, and low self-esteem. It can also be caused by upbringing. Get over here! Ah! Get away! Get away! Get away! Get away! 
Anchrophobia Anchrophobia is the very rare and extreme fear of wind. It can refer to a wide variety of air-related fears, like the fear of drafts, swallowing air, and even being blown away by strong gusts of wind. People who have anchrophobia try to stay away from doors and open windows as much as possible. They feel anxious around windmills, hand dryers, air conditioners, and overhead air vents. Based on a 2009 study, a possible explanation for this phobia is that those who suffer from it have learned to associate wind with tornadoes, hurricanes, and other wind-related disasters. Were you by most of the phobias listed here? These are just a few uncommon phobias being studied further by psychologists and researchers today. There are more unusual phobias that aren't discussed in this video. If you'd like to know more, let us know in the comments below. And we Hi there, Psych2Go fans. A quick thank you from us to you before we start. We want to let you know how much we appreciate your continued support and thirst for knowledge. So let's continue our brave march to learning about psychology. Fear. You felt fear. It's a dark night and you're watching a horror movie. You scream or jump a little when a scary scene comes up. Or you're plunging down the big drop on a roller coaster and your palms are sweating while you yell from the thrill. We're not talking about that kind of fear. Sometimes, fears become excessive and irrational to the point where we can't function normally. The intense worry and avoidance caused by these fears can interrupt day-to-day -day living causing panic when that fear is encountered. That's when the fear becomes a phobia. Phobias are classified into three types, social phobia, agoraphobia, and specific phobias. Specific phobias are further grouped into five major categories, environment, situational, animal, blood injection, injury, and others. A 2017 study found that over 10% of adults in the United States alone struggle with phobias. This makes phobias the most common psychiatric illness among women and second most common among men. Curious if you have a particular phobia? Let's look at the seven most common phobias. One, arachnophobia, the eight-legged nightmare. Currently, the most common phobia in the world is arachnophobia which is the fear of spiders. This phobia affects 3.5 to 6.1% of the global population, meaning around 300 to 400 million people are affected each year. Women are twice as likely to have arachnophobia when compared to men. However, 55% of people may harbor some fear of spiders, just not a full phobia. Researchers Oman and Maneka believe that arachnophobia may be rooted in our evolution. Allegedly, our ancestors found their appearance frightening and viewed them as a threat of food and water contamination. Easy. Ophidiophobia Do you hear hissing? Because I hear hissing. Have you seen something out of the corner of your eye that's long and sinuous and frozen fear? Maybe you can't catch your breath and your heart hammers in your chest when a friend shows you their Snake of the World book. If so, you just might have ophidiophobia, the fear of snakes. Ophidiophobia is the second most widespread kind of specific phobia, with around one third of adult humans reporting to be suffering from it globally. Similar to its siblings, arachnophobia, the fear of snakes is believed to be rooted in the primitive drive to survive as snakes are typically perceived as a vicious and dangerous creature. Additionally, personal experiences and cultural influences may also play a part, as studies have shown that in places where snakes are less common, more cases of ophidiophobia were reported. It's no wonder snakes often take a starring role in various movie scare scenes and fear-facing reality shows. Cambia così big. Ragazzi, è un serpente molto bello. Uh, questo mi ricorda un surimi. Un surimi? È vero, che è il colore del surimi. È vero. È un surimi. Beh, passiamo un altro serpente perché questo è un po' noi. Ah, si muove. 3. Ah. Acrophobia. Glass elevator? No thanks. I'll stay on the first floor. Affecting more than 6% of people globally, the fear of heights is another common phobia many of us have. This phobia's official name is acrophobia. No, 
We're not prejudiced against acrobats or other high-flying performance professionals. Intuitively, it makes plenty of sense why we'd learn to be afraid of heights. The research alleges that this phobia may be the result of an evolutionary adaptation, like many things. This adaptation developed to help keep us from falling to our deaths. A little of this can be helpful to prevent us from taking unnecessary risks. However, if it gets out of hand and escalates, it could lead to extreme daily difficulties. You might have a severe aversion to common structures such as bridges, towers, steep staircases, and other perceived high places for fear of triggering a panic attack. So, take a deep breath, grab a buddy, take it one small step at a time, and let's look- Phobia, or aerophobia, aka, so how long will it take to get from California to Tokyo by car? Aerophobia refers to the fear of flying, and it affects around 10 to 40% of American adults. Are you thinking right now, sure, humans don't fly naturally, so fear of flying is understandable? Well, while that's true, aerophobia is actually logically irrational, given that airplane accidents are so rare. Statistics report that traveling by plane is actually much safer than traveling by car. Nonetheless, people with aerophobia avoid flights as much as they can, which can be problematic for work requirements or long-distance relationships. 5. Cynophobia Did you say puppies? I think you pronounced demon hound wrong. Puppies, doggos, happy wagging tails, and those soulful eyes, and those sharp pointy teeth with their scary sheen. Uh, wait, what? Let us remember again that phobias are, by definition, irrational. The fear of dogs, official name, cynophobia, may be less common than the fear of snakes and spiders. However, it can be just as, if not more, debilitating. Just consider how many pets and stray dogs are present in any given neighborhood. That kind of prevalence makes it virtually impossible to avoid them completely. Unfortunately, this means xenophobics experience intense and frequent dread, anxiety, and even panic. Xenophobia could be caused by a traumatic childhood experience, such as being chased or bitten by a dog that was never addressed or otherwise fully resolved. Getting proper help and following professional therapy advice could not only make day-to-day -day life more livable, but allow you to revel in the wonderful world of dogs. 6. Trypanophobia would it be possible for me to take all my vaccinations in pill form? Next up, we have trypanophobia, the fear of injections. Ever seen the huge, strong sports guy break out into unprovoked tears when it was his turn to get vaccinated at school? Or seen the undisputed tough girl pass out when being asked to donate blood? Maybe they have trypanophobia. While it's normal to be afraid of injections as children, statistics report that the fear persists in approximately 20 to 30 percent of adults, escalating to become trypanophobia. Trypanophobics stringently avoid medical treatments, hospitals, and doctors. As you can imagine, this is incredibly risky to their health. How bad can it be, you ask? Well, the fear can be so intense that most would faint at the mere sight of a needle. An interesting bit of trivia, trypanophobia is the only kind of specific phobia that is found to run in families. And seven, mysophobia. Antibacterial hand gel? Check. Gloves? Check. Hazmat suit? Check. Maybe I need a bubble. Lastly, another common phobia shared by many, and even some well-known celebrities, is mysophobia, better known as the fear of germs. The term was first coined in 1879 by psychologist William Hammond, who believed that mysophobia was a symptom of OCD. This has since been debunked by the discovery that most people who have mysophobia aren't actually OCD. Mysophobia can manifest as excessive cleaning, compulsive hand washing, and extreme avoidance of bacteria and germs, 
such as frequent or constant use of gloves, face masks, and other perceived germ-blocking attire. In extreme cases, misophobia can cause people to become shut-ins, cutting themselves off from the outside world for fear of being contaminated. So, in the end, where do phobias come from? Well, according to the American Psychological Association, phobias typically emerge during childhood or adolescence, persisting into adulthood. Phobias, unfortunately, are usually not solo travelers. It's more likely to have multiple phobias than just a single one. Also, we have seen here that some are more common than others. Do you relate with any of these? Do you know someone who does? This has only shown some of the most common phobias. There are many more.